The University of Pretoria is a multi-campus public research university. It is a university that aspires to be internationally competitive and nationally relevant. As a shining example, the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences has academic and research programs that are proven to consistently conform to the highest of international standards. The faculty has four fields of specialization and aims to continuously strengthen its position as a leading institution in these fields through its academic and research excellence. The faculty pledges social integration and is known to be technically well-rounded, but above all, the faculty strives to assure that the market value associated with its degrees will always be of a competitive benefit to its students. In a world that is becoming more competitive by the moment, it is essential that students not only gather the education and skills necessary to perform in the marketplace, they should also receive practical experience that places them in the optimal position to find and keep the right jobs. This is what the departments in the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences offer. It is the combination of real-world application by working closely with industry partners, along with the cutting-edge academic expertise of the top-rated and internationally recognized lecturers who have a great understanding of the expectations of global and local industries that make the difference. We strive to produce graduates that appreciate the importance of community, entrepreneurial endeavor, and innovative action. EMS graduates are a new generation of future thought leaders who will create jobs and make a positive impact nationally and internationally. Make today matter. Good morning, a warm welcome at the EMS celebratory event. With this event, we would like to salute all academic, professional and support staff at the end of a very challenging year. The resilience and adaptability of our staff this year really pulled us through. We are proud that we could manage to complete the 2020 academic year. We would also like to use this event to celebrate our staff and faculty successes. One notable success is the 100% success rate in staff promotions this year. Congratulations to all our staff who received their promotions. Uh, latest news or fresh news, the Department of Human Resource Management just won the CEOPSA Award as the best IOP department of the year. Congratulations to the department. After our birthday in February, we had to adapt our centenary plan substantially. We hosted four successful EMS virtual talk events. We featured 43 alumni on our web, and we will continue to feature alumni even in 2021. Although different than anticipated, we are still celebrating our centenary and we will continue in 2021. Let me start by requesting Prof. Johan to highlight what he thought was the most notable teaching and learning successes of the year. Thank you, Elsby. Of course, um, what happened is our pass rate in the first semester jumped to 92.6% which was really amazing, and the jury is still out on the second semester. And to do this, staff had to jump into the online arena very quickly, and they just did this with remarkable ease. Um, they had to learn how to do Blackboard Collaborate sessions. They had to 
use discussion boards. They had to work on assessment because we know integrity is a bit of an issue there. And all of a sudden, they had to look at how to set their papers differently. And to the, in this respect, you know, they worked on the timing of their papers. They worked on having long questions, and even those were randomized, which was really quite innovative. And of course, the on PDF online writing was also something that came through quite strongly. Now, um, in order to assist our staff, and of course not to wait, waste a good crisis, we then moved on to virtual brown bags to upskill our staff where we thought it was necessary. And this proved to be extremely successful. Staff really came to the party beautifully. And in the one instance, we even had more than 100 people attending one of these brown bags, which was certainly a record for us. This shows us that our EMS staff are really committed to their teaching. And they are also quite happy to take a challenge head on. Thank you very much for that. Now over to Prof. Karen. Karen, what would in your view stand out as the most notable research and postgraduate successes of the year? What can I say about 2020? It was a challenging year and based on the limited research outputs as well as the zero travel opportunities that we had for research, we definitely experienced challenges. However, I remain optimistic. And I agree with the view of Amos Wilder, an American poet and professor in theology, who believed that at the null point, the zero breeds new algebra. In my reflection on 2020, I refer to three important milestones. First, the faculty had 32 doctoral graduates, including four staff members, and another nine staff members are very close to completing their PhD studies. Secondly, although the faculty's accredited journal articles listed for 2020 is about 50% lower than for 2019, judging by the journal rankings, the quality of these journal articles appears to be higher. And last, five research talk sessions on supervision, as well as six research talk sessions on research methods, kept the research conversation going in the faculty, and it created learning opportunities for all of us. Thank you, Corin. Now, our teaching and learning successes, as well as our research successes, uh, the perceptions of employers, all contribute to, to the improvement and maintenance of our position on world ranking tables. On the QS world rankings uh, by subject in 2020, economics again fell in the 20, 250 to 300 band, accounting and finance in the 150 to 200 band, on the Times Higher, Educa world, uh, Times Higher Education World Rankings by subject, in the field of business and economics, we are in the 300 to 400 band, and that includes all our subject fields. Then we, uh, on the Alwu or the Shanghai Rankings, again we have in finance as well as in economics, 150 to 200 band position. Karen, could you kindly announce the winners of the 2019 EMS Research Awards? Thank you. It is now my turn to announce the best research performers for the year 2019. The award for the most improved departmental research output goes to the Department of Marketing Management. And it gives me great pleasure to call on Yolanda as the head of the department to tell us about their exceptional year. So thank you, Madam Dean. This is a welcome surprise. Of course, I need to thank my team for doing the hard work to make this award possible. 
Uh, this is a special year for the faculty, but it's also a special year for the Department of Marketing Management because we are celebrating 50 years of marketing education. This university was the very first in the country to establish degrees in marketing management, and we are still taking the lead in the market in many respects. So receiving this award the year, this year comes at a very opportune time. The award for our research output is, in, is for 2019, a year when all staff members were research productive. More importantly, 86% of our research outputs were in international accredited Scopus journals. Thus, a high level of quality being produced, which is fantastic. Almost 20% of these outputs were with postgraduate students. As much as 70% of the outputs were with external colleagues, local as well as international. So I guess it pays to collaborate. I believe this award is testimony of the research culture we have in the department. I think we make an effort of not only celebrating our publications, but also our submissions. We have a barometer in the department where we display all our submissions on the one side and all our publications on the other side. And it's sometimes interesting to see that you need three to four times the number of submissions compared to the actual number of publications, which I guess demonstrates the importance of having a pipeline. So again, thank you for the support we receive from the faculty. I think we sometimes take for granted all the work that is done in Prof. Barak and Marcel's office, from sharing funding opportunities and arranging brown bags to making statisticians available. So a huge thank you, Prof. Lewitz, Prof. Barak and Marcel. And then lastly, again, thank you to the marketing and tourism team for their hard work. May our research activities continue to grow for the next 50 years. So thank you, Madam Dean. This acknowledgement is much appreciated. If I can now return to the other award winners for 2019, the first journal article publication winner is Dr. Ilini Yetbarek. The best junior researcher in management sciences is Dr. Tinashe Chuchu. The best junior researcher in financial sciences is Professor Astrid Schmulian. The best junior researcher in economic sciences is Dr. Matthew Clancy. The best senior researcher in management sciences is Professor Jenny Hubler. Jenny's quality research was also honoured by the university with an exceptional Achievers Award. The best senior researcher in financial sciences is Professor Stephen Kutsia. The best senior researcher in economic sciences is Professor Rula Inglisi Lotz. And then, colleagues, as no surprise, the 2019 Researcher of the Year is Professor Rangan Gupta. Rangan is unfortunately not able to join us today. But in his absence, Steve, as the HOD of the Department of Economics, will share with us Rangan's response of being acknowledged as the faculty's top performer for the past six years in particular with 72 articles in 2019. First of all, wow, well, excuse me. First of all, I would like to apologize for not being able to attend the event in person due to a prior unavoidable commitment. He would like to thank the research committee of the faculty for considering him for the award. He would also like to thank his department for maintaining a very conducive environment for research. Finally, he would like to thank all his co-authors without whom this would not have been possible. Over the last few years, his area of research has shifted a bit from pure macroeconomics to fin uh, financial economics, with a lot of focus on asset and commodity markets. His advisor, Professor Christian Zimmerman, used to tell him that research questions change, but the underlying tools and methods do not. 
They have just take different forms and become contemporary. Though he works with quite a number of co-authors, he does, does have a core group and the innumerable diverse discussions that he has with them on a regular basis has helped him to improve as a researcher and a person in general. This year has been different for all of us, but when he compares the difficulties that many people who he knows have had to face in terms of health, financial security, he has no complaints. Given the hardships that he saw this year, he made a concerted effort to ensure that if he indeed could do research related to the COVID-19 pandemic, it must have practical implications and must not be purely academic. In this regard, he believes that some of the co-authored research that he has done on the financial market uncertainty associated with infectious diseases and its impact on identifying safe havens and optimal portfolio design should, should be of help to investors if they do end up reading his work in the first place. Thanks again to one and all for sub being supportive of his research and also congratulations to the other winners. Congratulations again to all the research award winners. Uh, Yuan kindly announced the winners of the 2019 EMS Teaching and Learning Awards. Also, this will be my pleasure. Um, remember that we don't have a specific ranking under the Teaching and Learning uh, Awards for 2019 or any other year for that matter, but these are now presented alphabetically. Our first winner is Elise Kirsten of the Department of Financial Management, who had uh, an interdisciplinary project between financial management and, and, and engineering, which was really very innovative. Um, and this was done at honors level. The second group was uh, Rulin Kuntz and Marina Kirsten of the Department of Auditing, who used the Zootings, Zootings um, uh, engagement tool extensively to engage students and also help them to construct their own knowledge. And then thirdly, the team was Teresa Piddock, Nadia Barr and Juanita Fenter of the Department of Taxation, who made use of the iPeer tool to enhance group work and also brought in individual performance into group work. Really quite something to look at. It's my privilege to now introduce Elise Kirsten, who will provide us with more detail on her project. Elise. Thank you, Prof. Overalsa. It's indeed uh, an honor for, um, to be here uh, today. The Buri project was a very exciting um, interdisciplinary project where the BCom Honors Financial Sciences um, students collaborated with the final year mechanical engineering students. Um, the engineering students had to develop a prototype that will meet a need in the, in the market, while the finance students then compiled the business and financial analysis for the project similar to a real-world innovation and collaboration. The aim of the project was to simulate the collaboration between an R&D department or a project management team with the finance department of the company when developing a new project. The innovation was dubbed the Buri project as the engineering students were tasked to design an automated vending machine that can produce uh, fresh Burevors rolls. During this project, the finance students in teams had to develop a, f a framework for their respective finance topics and then gather the required information through collaboration with the engineering students as well as the other finance teams. They also had to consider external sources such as industry players and potential customers. This not only creates the opportunity for the students to um, uh, develop in-depth knowledge um, on the specific topic, but also to see the integration and the interdependence of the subject fields required to solve a problem in a real world scenario. The students had to gather their own information um, in order to make certain decisions and then present and motivate their decisions to the other teams involved in the project. And this developed um, great critical thinking and communication skills. A project like this would not be possible without the support of, of various people. Firstly, um, I would like to thank Dr. Lucas Duplessis from the Department of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering for suggesting this project in the first place. Um, the Buri project was, was his brainchild. And then he assisted a lot with uh, making the arrangements um, to get the student presentations and col collaboration sessions um, of, uh, uh, possible. I would also like to thank Dr. Duplessis for um, all his efforts to continue with a similar project this year, despite all the COVID-19 challenges. 
and I really hope that we can continue with this in the future and possibly um, uh, involve other departments to make um, a real difference in the world. I would also like to thank um, the, my colleagues in the Department of Financial Management for all your support and your advice, as well as my HOD Prof Hall. Um, your contributions always added a lot of value um, to the project. We are making notable progress in our AACSB journey. Let me just update you on two aspects. You are all probably now involved in the assurance of learning process, and we are making progress uh, uh, in, in that respect as well. Next year, you will all become more aware of the various classification categories of staff, and, and we will embark on that journey next year. We have submitted our first progress report in May this year. We received very minor aspects of update requirements, and we will submit our second progress report in February next year. We hope that, that we will then be ready for accreditation visit. Yuan, any other teaching and learning successes that you would like to highlight for us? And how do you see we going forward into 2021? Thank you, Elsevi. Um, there are three student, uh, or rather two student performance that I'd like to highlight. The first one is the EY Young Tax Professional Award, where EMS students would place second and third in South Africa in the national leg of this competition. Then um, the ITC results uh, in the Psycho Professional Exams for Chartered Accountants, their UP really had a marvelous run and our students turned out to have seven of the top 10 places out of 3,600 students who wrote this exam, which is indeed remarkable. At the same time also, um, our students were placed first in South Africa looking at the total cohort um, of students who wrote this exam. Then, uh, first for me was a virtual psycho accreditation visit. Well, it was the first actually in the country, and it was quite stressful, but we pulled that off very well with the assistance of all the staff involved with that. Then if we look at stu student funding, the more broad-based funding, there was funding from FACET, there was funding from ISFAP, and then more focused for the CA program, specifically the Tatuka uh, funding that was made available. That was really remarkable and assisted a lot of our students in this year. Now, for 2021, um, I foresee that we will be working with hybrid teaching and learning, perhaps even more aggressively than before. And the wonderful thing here is the fact that we do in, ha do in fact have much more experience with that at this stage. So we have a fairly high base from which can, we can now work and refine find our efforts. Um, quite important is that we need to engage with our students more. Research shows that the big problem with um, online teaching or remote teaching as we do it, as the students tend to disengage. So I really would like to encourage um, our staff members to engage more with our students on an informal matter every so often, just to keep uh, you know, them interested and to make sure that we understand also what uh, their position is and what their well-being status is at this stage. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, I also need to believe that we need to understand our students better. And especially in this online environment, we need to try and get closer to them. What we've then decided is that during the teaching and learning um, event that we have at the beginning of every year, I'm going to try and get somebody to talk to us about Generation Z because that's where the vast majority of our student cohort actually fits into the different generations that people talk about every so often. Also, we're going to look at some pointers on electronic marking, because that tends to remove a lot of human error if one does use that specific system. 
also we'll have to look at the enhancing of our the integrity of our assessments uh, we've come a long way since the first semester of 2020 there were major improvements i think on integrity of students in the second semester and since we now have the hang of it we're going to try for even better integrity in 2021. then what cannot be ignored ladies and gentlemen also is the fact that we need to contextualize our teaching as far as possible uh, we possibly can because this is part of our transformation project as well and to level the playing field for our diverse student body thank you Elsby. thank you Johan. Karen what are your plans for your portfolio for 2021 so Elsby, we have adjusted to the new normal but there are three areas that will require dedicated attention in 2021. The first is trans and interdisciplinary research. The Albert Latuli Leadership Institute, with its focus on sustainable development goals as well as leadership, provides an ideal platform for the faculty to promote trans and interdisciplinary research. And of course, we rely on the continuous quality contributions of the African Tax Institute. The second exciting development in the faculty uh, relates to the establishment of research chairs. The Department of Human Resource Management has embarked on a process to establish a chair in women's leadership. While the Department of Marketing Management is making progress in sourcing funding for a chair in customer experience management. Then lastly or thirdly, 2021 LCB will be a resource constraint year. We will have to take out all stops to cover shortfalls in research funding and we will have to explore innovative ways to capitalize on external research opportunity, funding opportunities. The faculty then has to support staff with writing grant applications as well as proposals. And lastly or finally, the COVID-19 health pa pandemic and its consequences have provided research opportunities which are already generating new knowledge and which could have a great impact on society. In 2021, the faculty will rely on each EMS researcher to make use of these opportunities and then to become the best researcher that he or she can be. Apart from our research and teaching and learning plans for 2021, as a faculty, we remain committed to our social responsibility. Just as an example, the Department of Business uh, Management initiate the Small Business Support uh, uh, Initiative during COVID period and had a commendable impact on, this, on, on small businesses in and around Pretoria. I also wish to commend and thank our student body, Kumalki. They have been very active this year in supporting our students through these difficult times. In conclusion, I would like to conclude by once more salute, saluting the commitment and dedication of our staff under very difficult conditions. This was a long year. May you all have a very enjoyable and relaxing festive season. Stay healthy and safe wherever you are going. Thank you.